All right, moving on to episode four. It is about two something in the morning right now, so you know what you're getting? You're getting goofy, Jason, that's right. This is late night, Jason. This is the I should be asleep, Jason, but you know what? I don't have work till later tomorrow. I can sleep in, which I don't ever get to do, so fuck it. Let's get these out of the way. I got two more to do tonight. So first up, we have Till Death. And the guy who directed this directed a movie called The Vagrant with Bill Paxton. This little movie right here. This movie's awesome, okay? You gotta see this movie. Uh, and, and as far as these packs go, he also directed The Fly 2, the sequel to the Jeff Goldblum one. Um, you wanna see the saddest scene of all fucking time? Watch this movie. Anyone who's seen this movie knows exactly what I'm talking about. If you watch this movie, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't even need to say it. Anyone who knows the movie is like, oh my God, it's tearing up right now. A tear is falling down their fucking face right now, or many of them. Um, but anyways, as far as these four pack goes, these stream factory four packs that they have, the outing, AKA the lamp, the godsend, and uh, what's the matter with Helen, Vagrant, really good stuff. Uh, Dungeon Master, Swell Cellar Dweller, Catacombs, this movie right here, Contamination Point Seven, uh, AKA the Crawlers, AKA the Creepers, is horrible. I don't care how many fucking names you give this movie, they're all shit. Anyway, um, so these seven movies are worth it. These are like six, seven bucks a piece, or something like that, nine bucks, 10 bucks a piece, maybe at best now. They go, they fluctuate up and down on Amazon. But best bang for your buck, I think I made a video of that once many months ago. Uh, they also do sci-fi packs as well, and these are some cool-ass movies here, so pick up these. Anyway, let's move on. We're not here to talk about that awesome shit. <laughs> um, now, this is a love potion episode. I know there's another one of these that's in an apartment complex. Uh, I, God, I don't rem I remember the episode super well. Uh, but this one's a little different. Um, but anyway, let's stick to this one. Now, <clears throat> so this guy wants to build land on this, this swamp land. And it's going to take millions of dollars to build it. And he's given everything away to do it. And uh, so he meets this woman who has $4 million in the bank. And he needs her to fall in love with him so he can marry her and get all her money and whatever. So he goes to this witch doctor chick who does black magic, who he had a relationship with, screwed over, you know, and she's like the jaded lover, but she's going to help him out, <laughs> supposedly. And she gives him the fucking love potion, and she says one drop, like, whatever, and two, she'll be your, you know, yours for life. Um, so he gives her the two drops, and it totally works. She comes back, she fucks him out of his mind, he's so happy, she wakes up in the morning, she's all about him, and then he decides to give her more, and more. So even though it's working, he decided to give her more, and he puts like two drops in, and he's like, well, fuck it, if it's doing this much, like I might as well put a bunch in. I don't understand that. That's working, like, you're good, right? What? Fucking people are so stupid. <laughs> so yeah. And then uh, she dies from this. And she comes back from the dead. And I love how easy it is for people to get out of graves in movies. Uh, they always just pop up and she just slides right out. Now, of course, the tone of this episode is pretty silly. So it's not supposed to be realistic in the slightest. But I just it makes me think of always when... You know, when zombies are coming up out of their graves, and it's like, um, yeah, have you ever seen movies like uh, freaking Buried with Ryan Reynolds or uh, Buried Alive with Ali Sheedy, right? They made two of those damn movies. I've seen them both. They're both actually pretty good. Anyway, staying on track. Too many recommendations. People are like trying to write down fucking how many? Too many. That's how many. Um, but yeah, if you ever watch those kinds of movies, or if you've ever been buried underground, which I have not, nor do I ever want to be, 
uh, it's fucking impossible to get out of there. I guess unless you got like, uh, you know, freaking <laughs> the bride from Kill Bill, Beatrix. Beatrix kiddo and she's doing her little hand punch and then she just like digs her way up like 20 feet. That seems so fucking funny looking. Um, anyway, okay, we're way off track here. Rambles as usual. Um, but I love how, yeah, she comes back and everything's fine and she's like, I want you to fuck me like five times a day or something crazy, which sounds torturous. That's it's insane amount of times every single day. Um, but then he comes and he's about to tell his friend, like, ha ha ha, like she's still alive. Like I can still do this. And she comes out and of course she cuts this guy's head off with one swing of an ax, which is completely impossible, but I love how they do it in movies always. Like it's so easy to remove someone's head. Um, but he sees her and, and, and he just saw her like fucking 10 minutes ago, five minutes ago. And she comes out and she is just like. He says that she's been embalmed and he's like, that's impossible. And he looks up and she's like just falling apart. And then he runs out of the house and he goes into the swamplands. And then she comes to him like a minute later and her, like she's just all skull. And then the next scene, she's like completely skeleton. <laughs> she falls asleep. So, or she falls apart so fucking fast. Like this guy is either a, like, he's not a great lover, I guess. He's not really touching her body much because I feel like her body would have fallen apart from the amount of sex that they supposedly had since that scene where she came back to the scene where she's falling apart. I'm not sure how she stayed intact for like a whole day of, of sex and mayhem, but uh, yeah, about that. Uh, yeah, I just thought it was so funny how fast, but I uh, really like the FX here. There's only one part where when she's going to kiss him at the end and her tongue is sticking out of the skull, you can clearly see like the actor underneath the skull's mouth that's just been painted black to try to make it look like black and a tongue. It's really obvious. It's bad. Um, they could have just had a fake tongue and had it like sticking out with an animatronic. I mean, they have like what? Fucking 10 puppet wranglers for the Crypt Keeper. They couldn't get a couple of them to get a tongue. They had to paint a actor's face really not that they filmed them together but still i just feel like because it's that show anyway um and so he takes his own life which he falls in the swamp lands and he's 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 you know sinking really really fast into the swamp lands and of course that's going to bring me to another movie and movie i recommend and talk about here all the time is the incredibly hilarious, wonderful Neighbors with John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd. Yes, I have it on VHS because there's been no proper DVD release and I'm waiting for a good one, not some fucking ready-order bullshit. Um, but God, that movie's hilarious. Please tell me there's some fans of Neighbors out there. It's so good. John Belushi plays the straight guy and Dan Aykroyd plays the maniac nutcase in this. It's a total role reversal of their usual shtick. And it's like one of the last movies, if not the last movie, Belushi died before I made. And it's seriously dark, black humor. Most people don't get it at all. It is a very bizarre movie. Very bizarre. But I just think it's like one of the funniest movies ever made. Anyway... Yeah, he kills himself, and then the jaded lover brings him back from the dead. And I love how when they bring him back, you know, he's been brought back from the dead, but they also brought the head of the guy that she decapitated earlier back, and he's just laughing and joking. You're like, ha, ah, like, he's going to get you. Like, he's not taking this bad at all that a voodoo curse has been put on his severed head, and now he has to live for years or decades or whatever as a severed head like he's all about this this guy isn't the one who killed him it's the wife shouldn't he be mad at her like he's why is he uh, why is he happy that this guy is gonna did he put she put a curse on the head i just think it's funny that that he's so into it, it just didn't really make any sense but whatever anyway all right i think we're done my rambling went on for like 10 minutes i thought i was going to talk about this episode for like five seconds but uh talking about I think I talked more about other films that you need to watch than this um, it's an okay episode it's kind of silly um, well let's move on shall we <laughs>